you all so if you don't know it's six feet apart social distancing there so at least we can go to God anyway. Amen. 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 <laughs> Amen. God bless you. So Father it is in the name of Jesus that sometimes really do come to you weary wounded and sad. All right, come on. And we're looking, dear God, to find in you a resting place. Yeah. A resting place for my burdens and for my cares. A resting place for my doubts. A resting place for my fears. A resting place for my hurts. A resting place for, for my frustrations. Yeah. Lord, I look at this world sometimes and I have to scratch my head and wonder how did humanity make it thus far being in such an inhumane state. Well, some of the problems we're facing are not black and white. They're not brown or yellow. Right. But dear Lord, it's a lack of civility and a lack of folks just valuing what it means to be human. All right. Humanity, dear Lord, has taken a downward turn and so Lord, we need you. The downward turn has gone so far, dear Lord, that we are in a world where right now it seems like rioting every weekend is the norm of the day because, dear Lord, many of us are not working, not in school because of this issue that we cannot control. We're dealing with messes that we could control. Could deal with the COVID situation, can't control it. But now, dear Lord, well, we need to just sit down and begin to be humane to one another, respectful of one another, looking at authority, doing the right thing, making the right choices. We see it time and time again. Yeah. People are dying when they should be living to see another day. All right, mm -hmm. What happened here in Atlanta here again mm -hmm. doesn't make any sense, dear Lord. Mm -hmm. And I say with my anger, that the devaluing side of a black man in America is becoming more and more prevalent. And it's not just white on black, uh -huh. but it's just everything on black. All right. And it black really does matter. Mm -hmm. And so I'm asking, dear Lord, that you cultivate a new spirit among us, that we find the civility among ourselves first, All right. that other folks will realize that you're going to respect us because we respect one another. Yeah. Now, dear Lord, we won't go through the business of tearing one another down because now is a good time for us to hit the reset button and to start building one another up. Right. That if America won't change to lift us, we would at least lift ourselves and find ourselves once again in positions of authority in our own communities, making a difference, yep. loving one another, respecting one another, looking out for one another, caring for one another. Uh -huh. Picking one another up and helping to protect one another. Right. Should not be us against them. Uh -huh. But dear Lord, it is truly clear. Cancel all the other things they're trying to deal with. Black really does matter. All right. Black, yeah Lord, it matters. Mm -hmm. But it has to first matter more to us and we're in that place. Well, I'm asking, oh God, forgive us of our sins against ourselves. Yes, sir. Well, yeah. Forgive us for allowing these systems to go unchecked. Forgive us, dear Lord, for not stepping up to be bold enough. Dear Lord, bless those families that are hurting from folks being slammed around, locked up, shot in the back, and dear Lord, trampled upon. Bless those family members surviving, wondering why did it happen all over again. Uh -huh. I'm asking, dear Lord, give us answers, because for the life of me right now, I have absolutely no clue. But when I think about our children here at the church, my grandboys and our own children, uh -huh. I think, dear Lord, that here's where we're going to ask that you do what only you can do. Mm -hmm. Protect us from all hurt, harm, and danger. All right. Watch over us, dear Lord, when we go through ups and downs in this world, and guide us and keep us all right, uh -huh. and protect us until we meet again. Yes. But bring us back home safely every time we venture out. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, dear Lord, in the name of Jesus, bless our America that we do not be the same old country. Mm -hmm. Tear down these negative, nasty systems from the tap house into our own house. But dear Lord, more important, 
What I'm asking is that Satan remove his hand off our country and that God you step in and we receive you more and more and more that we be more like Jesus right. and less like man. Right. Heal us. Comfort us. Forgive us. Patch us up. Strengthen us. Mm -hmm. This we pray, oh God, and wipe the tears from my eyes. All right, now, come on. Again. Yes. In the name of Jesus, we thank you and we praise you. We leave it all with you because mm -hmm. we can't carry these jacked up loads anymore. All right. We leave it with you in the name of Jesus. We leave it with you. Let every heart simply say amen. 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 How about that song that says, I, I pray for you? You pray for me? What is that? What was that song? Oh, I need you to yeah, yeah, I need you. I need you. I need you. I want you all to realize we've got some more names to add on the list. Right now, we've got some more names to add on the list. Louisville, Kentucky, Chicago, and Atlanta now is a hotbed for foolish decisions. Doesn't make any sense, y'all. We're back here again. It ain't nothing new. And systems still haven't figured out everybody got a way to record your actions. So make better choices. I want you to know as your pastor, I'm not anti-police. I'm anti some people being in police positions. We've got to make some changes. But to be a part of the change, we also have to have our young people preparing themselves to be a part of that difference. Don't back away. Don't bow down. Because once again, that's how Satan always plays us also. We get ourselves in no position to make a change. Keep your mayor in your prayers governor in your prayers, the president in your prayers. Keep your own household, your own neighborhood in your prayers. Sing this song, church. I need you. I need you. You need me. We're all a part of God's body. Stand with me.
does not does not itemize. You are you are you are only a part of me because of skin color means I really do need you. And I hope there's something I can help to provide so you know that you really do need me. These relationships matter. And and I and I want you to honestly, honestly, don't gloss over these moments because we're going to miss it. I will share this with you. My problem with what I see now is that we're about to throw everything into this painful time. A lot of that stuff doesn't need to be there. Black Lives Matter. And let's start dealing with that element of systemic racism that has been a cloud in America. But now everybody wants to throw everything into the pot. Everyone wants to try to fix all the different problems. And it's just not going to work. Let's deal with one thing at a time. Racial disparity. We'll get around to all the rest once we start opening the door to realizing that there are other issues, but we're throwing so much into this energy that my fear is, is that we're either gonna miss it or we make quick fixes and nothing gets fixed at all. People arguing back and forth on, should it be a black person on the bachelor or bachelorette? Ain't got to do with nothing real. Come on, man. It's just a bunch of folks sitting around slobbering on one another one hour a day anyway. And we watch that mess. It makes no sense whatsoever. Like I say, I mean, my blackness is not something I can take off. It's not something I can share. But whether I, 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 however my gender preferences are and what have you, this is not time for every fight to be fought. Right now, let's just deal with this that we see over and over again. Pour that energy there. Make some substantive changes. So that when times come around like Juneteenth and Tulsa, Oklahoma, for 99 years where there was an entire community of black folks that was burnt, lynched, and killed just because they were proud, they were prosperous, and they were free. And folks didn't like it. But here in our own psyche, most of us don't even know what those dates mean in the long run. So we have to once again take care of home first. If I can say to you, I love you and I need you, you are really my brother and sister in Christ. We start loving one another, caring for one another. We can get the same anger the next time we got a young black man who shoots a young black man. We can march up and down the street and just pack it out. We can begin to say to one another, you know what, we really matter. But right now, let's ride this wave of what we got. Because guess what? Black lives do matter. They do matter. Here we've got a word that just deals with a fresh look at righteousness. I, I didn't want to get too much, but I, I'm, I'm heavy about much, and I'm sure you are too. But here today, we're looking at the gospel as recorded by Matthew chapter 5, looking at verse number 10. And it's a very simple verse, if you will. Matthew 5 and 10, as we're dealing with the Beatitudes, if you will, repeat after me. Blessed are they, Blessed are they which are persecuted, which are persecuted. For righteousness sake. For righteousness sake. For theirs. For theirs. Is. Is. The kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven. I will now read that again. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 5 and 10. I want to deal with for a few minutes from the idea a fresh look at righteousness. A fresh look at righteousness. Now we ask, oh God, let your word go forth. Let it be bold. Let it be clear. Let it be plain. Get me out of the way, and Lord, have your way. Whew. It's heavy, Lord, but it's a burden we don't have to bear. We give it all over to you. You say you carry our heavy loads, you patch us up, you work it out, we give it all over to you. Now the Lord, get me out of the way, and Lord, have this moment. Speak a word to us all. We need a fresh look at what righteousness really is. Now, Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, my strength, my redeemer, and my friend. This I do ask in the mighty name of Jesus. 
let your word go forth this day. We pray in thy son's name. Amen. Amen. A fresh look at righteousness. A fresh look at righteousness. And so when we look at the notion of righteousness, it has sometimes plagued us in our own communities because being righteous sometimes gets confused with the notion of what it means to be self-righteous. Righteousness is not something that makes you pleasing in your own eyesight. Righteousness is not something that makes you want to placate and to bow down to the notions of what makes you look good in the eyesight of others. The only righteousness that matters is that we be righteous in the sight of God. Yeah. And here, what Jesus is saying in verse number 10 of, of these, the Beatitudes, here that are listed in chapter number 5 of Matthew, while he gives the opening portion of the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus is letting us know here again that righteousness matters. He tells us, he says, Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. The first thing I want you to do is to understand that this notion of Jesus teaching and sharing with Jews and new converts about the kingdom of heaven is to a degree a new construct for many Jews. The understanding as they were raised was simply that if you are living by the law, then you will get into this place we call heaven. We know that it is mentioned several times in the Old Testament as a place where God resides. And if God is there, then after a good life trusting God on this side, you want to think you can be with God on the other side. It is mentioned so many times that God is in heaven. But the problem with the Jews at this point in the New Testament is that they might have possibly missed this new understanding. For here Jesus mentions it in verse number 3 and now again here now in verse number 10. And I'll mention what he mentions also about this kingdom of heaven in verse number 20. And the Jews have grown up knowing that heaven is where God is. But they are now about to be indoctrinated into an understanding. But to be with God is not being obedient to the law. It's to be with the one who God sent who is the son of God. That allows you now this entrance into the kingdom of heaven. Beforehand, it was just about the law. Now it's about receiving the one who will make heaven possible for you to obtain. It's now about not just seeing that we get there by doing the good things. It's now about receiving Christ and knowing that now good can really begin in our lives. Yes, you and me and even them can have this, the kingdom of heaven. But here what I want to know is, do you also see what Jesus is saying? And that is that the righteous shall have this place called the kingdom of heaven reserved for them. But he also says, those who are persecuted for your righteousness. I know we want to just skip our way into heaven and everything is hiding, hiding, and everything's all right, and, and it's a joy, it's actual, everything is mighty satisfaction. Zippity do die, zippity I. Mm -hmm. That's what we want heaven to be. But Jesus is saying that if you are righteous, mm -hmm. you're going to have to catch it a little bit down here. Well. And persecuted means is more than just a little. Mm -hmm. Here, my friends, I just want to look at, from a fresh perspective, at the idea of righteousness. The first thing is, what is righteousness? What is righteousness? I'll give you one of the best descriptions I've found. It comes from Baker's Evangelical Dictionary on Biblical Theology, where it says that of righteousness, it says, God the Father is righteous. He is just. God, I mean, Jesus Christ, his son, is the righteous, just one. The father, through the son and in the spirit, gives the gift of righteousness, which is then termed justice, to the repentant sinner for salvation. 
In other words, when you say Jesus comes in because God sent him to be the one who enters in. And the Holy Spirit moves in your life in a way that is now making you to be that repentant sinner. For such believing sinners who are now repentant sinners and no longer are sinners but are now moving to be saints, such believing sinners are declared righteous or just by the Father through the Son who are now made righteous or just by the Holy Spirit working in them and will be holy, righteous or just in an age which is yet to come. They are, will be righteous because they are in a covenant relation with the living God who is the God of all grace and mercy and who will bring completion what he has begun in them by declaring them righteous for Christ's sake. Repeat that back to me and use a bad one up in the head of the head. <laughs> Righteousness literally means that I've accepted Jesus as being the Son of God. And when I accepted Jesus, the Holy Spirit also kicked in and it changed my dynamic. I'm no longer the person I used to be. I'm not a sinner anymore. I'm a repentant sinner. I've sought forgiveness. I've asked for forgiveness. And now I'm moving in a new direction. Now I'm looking for that new walk and for that new talk. I'm looking for the change to take place in my life. All of the ideas of righteousness are convoluted when we look at it from a dictionary perspective. What righteousness means to you and me, brothers and sisters, simply is this. I gave my life to the Lord. And he's changed me so much so that I'm not who I used to be. I am so much better. And I'm getting better and better every day. I'm not just righteous. I am walking in righteousness. I'm trying to do God's will at every stage. So what is righteousness? It is the changed life of those who believe in Jesus. Who have accepted him as their personal Lord and Savior. Know that God makes it all possible. And that the Holy Spirit rules and abides and, and all of the hellish notions of life can no longer stop you. You are right now on a godly path. Righteousness means you are now set aside. But if you are the righteous, then I want to warn you. That's when things are about to get rough. But the second thing I want you to know is, is there's some confusion about righteousness. For it says here later on in chapter 5, verse number 20, Jesus says in verse number 20, For I say unto you, that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. What Jesus is saying is, your righteousness got to be better than them first folks who show up at the temple. What he's saying to us here today is your righteousness got to be better than who? Church folk. For here is where the confused ones about righteousness are those who talk about righteousness, who say we pray in righteousness, who try to act like righteous, who, well, we look righteous on Sunday morning and we do a good job of making it look real good, but righteousness is something that is not something you can dress, something you can placate. It's something that you need to have that's a change in your soul. Those who are most confused about righteousness, as Jesus is saying, are the scribes and the Pharisees. you got to be more righteous than them, he says in verse number 20. And he's also saying to us here today, if you're here in the church, just to be in the church, to look like the church, well, I can tell you, brothers and sisters, you have succeeded. You have fooled me real good. Even in mass, I can tell you on your way to heaven. Anyhow, amen. But at the end of the day, you're not trying to please Jones. I can't do nothing for you to get you in on the other side. I didn't pay the price for your salvation. I'm not the one who hung on yonder's cross. Stop trying to please folks down here. They can't do nothing to get you over there. The problem is I got to work with you. I got to deal with you, 
And don't let my old person show up because you got to deal with me too. But here is where the confusion about righteousness is when we start trying to be what we think other folks want us to be. And all we need to do is to be about the business of Christ. What is righteousness? Righteousness is to be saved, is to be a repentant soul. Who is confused about righteousness? I'd say that the church is confusion and others is believing that we have to go to the kingdom of heaven, another place where Jesus says, I'm coming to let you know you don't have to go to another place. I'm about to make a change in your life even right now. Right now. Oh, my friends, and then my last point, and I'm through, about this fresh look at righteousness. And that is, and I want you to understand that this is for each of you. These are your marching orders. But hear me well when I say, if you're persecuted for being righteous, so be it. All right. You can't satisfy everybody. And in your Christian walk, it's not your task to try to satisfy everybody. And if they talk about you, so be it. Let me hear you say, so be it. So be it. Let me hear you say it like you mean it. So be it. So, be it. so my friends, if they tear you down and, and they try to do all they can to break your spirit, so be it. If they try to call you everything but a child of God and everything other than your parents' child, so be it. If they mock and ridicule you for just trying to do right, so be it. If you reach out to help somebody, you help them and they still slap your hand, so be it. If they get angry just because you won't try to be just like them, so be it. My friends, Satan plays so many games in the church, outside the church, even within church folks. Stop playing those games. Get on a righteous track. Stop trying to please everybody. So be it. All right, so be it, so be it, so be it. Mm -hmm. You're going to catch a little, and it's not going to be pleasant, but so be it. Mm -hmm. So in this fresh look at righteousness, Jesus says that you are going to be persecuted mm -hmm. for your righteousness. Mm -hmm. All right. To get the kingdom of heaven, you're going to have to suffer a little bit. But what I want you to have is this so be it mindset. You can't please everybody, but we're only trying to do what? Live to please God. And so be it. It's going to be the way we walk out of here today. Problems are going to come, but so be it. Disappointments are real, but so be it. People are going to fail our expectations, but so be it. Because we are trying not to serve them, but we're trying to serve the Most High God. Uh -huh. Be righteous and walk in it. Know that you're going to catch a little bit of frustration. Know that you're going to have to pray every once in a while. Know you're going to have to bend down on bended knees and ask God for strength and ask God for forgiveness. Sometimes in the same prayer. But so be it because he will still hear and answer your prayer. Perfection is not who you are today. But you're moving day by day righteously to get better today than I was yesterday. And I want to walk better tomorrow than I am today. So be it. You don't like me? That's all right. So be it. Talk about me just as much as you please. I'm going to stay on bended knees. So be it. And once again, if they put that knee on your neck, so be it. And if you still cannot breathe, so be it. And even if they shoot you in the back, so be it. All right. Because you're on a different path. Yes, Songwriter said, I'm pressing on the upward way. Uh -huh. New heights I'm gaining every day. Mm -hmm. Still praying as I onward bound. Lord, plant my feet right. on a higher ground. Yeah. Lord, lift me up and let me stand. Mm -hmm. By faith on Canaan's table land, yeah. a higher plane that I have found. Yes, Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. All right. mm -hmm. Go out of here, church, and be righteous. But to receive the guidance in your righteousness, mm -hmm. you must first give your life to Christ. That is the only way righteousness can be made of you. I offer Christ to you by little by Christian experience as a candidate for baptism. Come on. Bring your wounded self. Bring your frustrated self. Bring your angry self. Just bring yourself. Bring the real you. And start to see what Jesus can do to change you. Is there one who wants to give your life to the Lord here today? Is there one? This look at righteousness cannot go without you realizing that you're going to suffer a price to be righteous in Christ. 
Suffer it with gladness. Suffer it with joy. And suffer it with the understanding that so be it. Because if you're doing right by God, what else really matters? So be it. Now unto him who is able to keep us from stumbling and falling to the all-wise and mighty God, be power and glory. The one who leads us from this place, who will watch over us, protect our families, and bring us back here safely again. Come on, huh? And help us to love one another, care for one another, reach out for one another. Mm -hmm. And do, dear Lord, what only we've forgotten to do all these years. Yes. Dear Lord, I'm asking that you protect us and make it real. And Lord, we're going to walk out of here with this so be it spirit. All right, man. Talk about me as much as you please. So be it. All right. I'm going to stay on bended knees. Come now on. unto the only wise and mighty God be power and glory. Henceforth now and forevermore go forward in your righteousness. Let every heart say amen. 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 I love you. Amen. Amen. God bless you. I just came up with something uh, before you all. So first Sunday. First Sunday in first Sunday in July. I need every graduate to come here with cap and gown. First, not, did I say July? Yeah, first Sunday in July. First Sunday in July, they're going to walk across the stage. They're going to have two minutes to thank their family and their loved ones. You're going to wear a cap and gown first Sunday in July, and then we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna celebrate you, and we're going to keep it going. Amen. All right. We'll say amen. God bless you. We love you. Reach out to somebody. Share that word with us, first Sunday in July, have the young ones come here who graduated in Captain Gap. Oh.